Hey y'all, Brandon Hewitt here with Be Random Fishing and I cannot wait to show you what's in this box. This is the most I've ever spent on a fishing reel ever. Let's crack it open. This is awesome. These are on back order. They're so hard to find right now and I got super lucky. There it is. Yeah. A Curado BFS. So the BFS is bait finesse system. And it's so you can cast like smaller baits without having to use a spinning reel. And I am so excited about this. Brand spanking new. When I paid a lot of money for my DC, that uh, that SLX DC, it's about the same price as this one, but I got it used on eBay. So it wasn't all pretty packaged, nice and new. Let's get it out and see how pretty this thing is. Oh, it's so smooth. It's a little heavier than I thought it was gonna be, but it's tiny. Ooh, you hear that? I'll show you that in a minute. So the BFS, the spool is really shallow. For line, I got 10 pound braid and it's uh, the equivalent of like two pound test. It's real, real tiny stuff because if I was to put regular line on this, I'd only be able to put like 20 yards on. It's so shallow. And that's because you want the, the spool is supposed to be really, really light that way the startup inertia when you cast a little tiny bait, um, it doesn't have any problems getting the spool spinning and you can cast it a lot farther than you would a regular bait caster. That is the plan anyway, so we're gonna definitely put it to the test. We're gonna get some line on it. Golly, it's so smooth. All right. Oh, and it comes with oil also in the box. So enough of all that, let's get some line on this thing. So I went with the Berkeley because it's only five times where the suffix is like eight times braid. So this is supposed to be like designed for maximum strength and abrasion resistance. Um, since it's only 10 pound test, I wanted something a little stronger. And for the 10 pound test, it was the, the smallest diameter. So this 0 0.005 inches. It was the smallest diameter out of all the 10 pound tests they had at Academy. They didn't have anything smaller than 10 pound test. So I had to go with that. I couldn't go with like eight or six but this braid is really really skinny so since the spool is ported it has holes you could tie directly to the spool but i don't want to do that because you don't have a lot of line so if i do get spooled or i i cast too far um, those little ports there are pretty sharp and it'll probably just cut my line like that i was looking and there's a couple youtube videos there's a bunch of people doing it a couple different ways but what you do is you just tie it on to the spool and I'm going to use a uni knot. All right, there's our uni knot. It's nice and slippery. Pull it tight so it's nice and tight on that spool. Now if you notice, it, like all braid on bait casters, it doesn't want to grip the spool. So instead of putting electrical tape, because that'll like, with these holes, it'll kind of like degrade over time and it'll kind of gum up your spool. And you can't back it with monofilament because the, sh the spool is so shallow, you won't have any room for any other braid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the side plate off and on this reel, you just open that button right there, spin and remove. And here's the brakes too. It's got a pretty cool, interesting brake system. These little magnets, um, it's got eight of them and you can take them off to fine tune the braking system to your liking. So what we're gonna do is remove the spool and it's kind of tricky because it's kind of tight with that line right there. There we go. Now that we have the spool off, we can cinch this nut down nice and tight. There we go. And trim off the excess. Awesome, now see it's still slippery. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a loop like this over itself on one side, pull it tight. On the other side, you do the same loop. Make sure that that line is 
under the loop and then put it through. Pull it tight and then do it again on this side. Just like that. Oh look, it's not slipping at all. Now you just take this, this spool and you put it back in the reel. Then you take your side plate. We're going to leave all the brakes in it for now. And you put your side plate back on. Once you turn the side plate, make sure you flip that little lever back to close, otherwise your side plate will fall off. And then, look at that, it doesn't slip at all. You can line your reel with the braid. And I'm gonna go get my, my handy dandy board with a nail in it. Where did I put that thing? Found it. So now I just take my line and stick it through this nail like so, and we're going to spool this puppy up. And I think that's all the line we're going to be able to hold. See right there? It's right barely to that, that little indent, the little ramp there on the side of the spool. And it's not a lot of line, guys. That is a, that's kind of scary. But another awesome thing about this reel most times, um, when a fish is pulling drag on a bait caster, like in this clip. You guys get all kind of the fish over, over here. <laughs> over the next one. Um, you can't hear it. They're like a silent drag. It just pulls drag nice and quiet. This reel, let me loosen the drag up some right there. You hear that? That is magic to my ears. Oh, that's so awesome. So I cannot wait to catch a big old fish on this. Let it rip some drag out. Gosh, that's so awesome. So I want to do some cast tests. I want to compare it to a spinning reel because it's supposed to replace my spinning reel, right? As my ultralight setup. So let's go do that. And hopefully it lives up to all the expectations I have because I am super excited about this reel.